When talking about passive income, your personal island is the go-to place to get this all set up. In this video, we'll talk about the different things that you need to do. I'll walk you through it right now, quick and simple on how to get the things that you need to set up on your island to start getting your passive income. First off, there's two things that we need to think about when thinking about passive income is our farms and our laborers on the island. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do if you don't have your island set up is here is the, the map to the town. We're gonna zoom in and we're gonna look for the island merchant. You go to the island merchant. We're gonna talk to her and there's gonna be an option to buy a personal island. Mine's already five out of six, but on this tab, you'll be able to buy your own personal island. Now do keep in mind that you need to have purchased 30 days of premium in game. That's whether you paid the, at the time, Right now it's nine point, almost 9.7 million silver in game. Or if you purchase the first 30 days, I think it's around like, uh, it's something around like if you do a starter bundle at the time of this video, they have starter bundles, but it's around almost 12 bucks to get your first 30 days. And once you get that 30 days, you can, you know, get your passive farms going, work on your laborers. You can do everything you need to get that income going. And then hopefully you can pay in silver for the rest of the time. But this is where you buy your personal island. So we are on Fort Sterling. Every place will be different, but you're going to look for the travel planner. So the travel planner is the place that you use to travel to different locations and it will also be used to travel to your personal island. So we're going to roll on over there real quick and we'll hop on my personal island. Welcome, All we do is just buy the journey, make sure you're going to your island. And this is where it spawns me because I already have a house set up. Um, it'll, it'll spawn you in your island. Um, this is... Currently the setup for my island, five out of six, I have a bunch of houses set up. But the thing is, is you're gonna wanna set, you're gonna wanna set up all houses on your island. So if you press H on your keyboard, or if you're on the phone, there's a builder button. These are all the options for the buildings that we're gonna wanna choose. And I know that it looks tempting that you're gonna wanna build everything that you can on this island. But trust me, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna only build houses on your personal island. Now a guild island will have different crafting types of stuff and you know all the different farming and military. You're gonna want houses because houses are where you store your laborers. And we're gonna show you right now that laborers are the ones that you send out. that will bring resources, they can bring silver back to you you they can bring trophies they can bring a bunch of different things back to you so here is a chart showing you of the different types of tiers of houses that we're going to be building as well as the material needed to build the houses so as you can see we have tier two is the novice house uh, we're going to need 180 tier two block We'll need 180 tier three block for the next one, as well as tier one wood and tier one stone come with all of them. So if you, you can pause the video here and kind of use this as a reference point. Um, right here in my inventory currently, I have the setup to make straight to a tier five house. So 450 rough logs, 45 rough stone, and 180 of each tier of block. So if you just want to go off of that, you can. Here is the thing laborers though at tier five and expert house you can have three laborers so it jumps after tier four to three laborers and then it just stays at three laborers so in all thinking about how to set up these houses you want to go to at least tier five and stay there until your laborers are tier five if you want to get them to tier six you're going to have to up the tier of the house but you're going to want to get to tier five just so you can get those three laborers and you can just stay on that get the passive income so I'll show you how to build the first house. I'm gonna walk you through it right now. So we're gonna to go to houses in the building tab. It was H on the keyboard or the building option on mobile. We're going to press house. It's gonna tell us what construction materials we need. 100 silver to build and we're gonna press build. It's gonna let us drag it around. We're gonna throw it on one of our open empty plots that you'll see. Um, it's the ones that kind of like have the stone on it. And you can also see them on your little mini map as well as if you press N you can see the little patches that you have to build your houses. We're gonna place this. So we're gonna pay the 100 silver. Now that it's down, there's a construction plot that pops up. Click on that plot. And now you use these plus signs to fill up all of the different material that we're gonna need. So we're gonna take this house. All right, now that it's built. All right, now we have a, boom. It should, it's not even popping up on the map yet. That's weird. So. You can just click this spot right here. You can see that we have a novice house. There's this little board in the front of the houses and you can go inside. It's tiny right now. It can only hold one laborer, but we're going to take this house straight to tier five. 
okay? If you want to stop at a tier four, you can and just have two laborers. I highly recommend going to tier five. So you're going to click on this. We're going to go down to renovations and you're going to press the upgrade button. From there, it'll show us what resources we need and we press begin. We can then fill all of these tabs to get the next house built. The next house will automatically build a little bit bigger. We're going to just do this again. We're going to press the board in the front. We're going to press renovations. We're going to press upgrade and we will begin the next upgrade. Throw everything we need in there. The house is upgraded. The board moves sometimes. So just, you know, renovations upgrade. Now we need granite block, which we have right here. All right. Now the house is tier five. We have the house fully set up. I'm just going to leave the bear out here. So the house is fully set up. Now, what do you do with these houses? The point of them is to place laborers. So if you go back to this board and you scroll down to hire laborers, there's going to be novice laborers that you can purchase for a thousand silver a piece. Now you could go to the market that is in your city and you could purchase higher tier laborers if you want. I'm just going to show you how to do it from a novice standpoint. There's different types of laborers. So there's like now, you know, the imbuer, fisherman for fishing, the Fletcher, blacksmith for different types of crafting and different types of activities. You're going to want to pick one laborer and stick with that laborer. Just because if you're going to be only cutting wood, it makes no sense to have a novice stone cutter because you're going to be working on specific tasks. So it's it just like, hold on, let's, uh, let's, so let's hire a mercenary. We're going to do a tier one mercenary. All right. And this house can hold three laborers. All right, so we have one mercenary down inside the house. We're not gonna send them out on any journeys right now, but I can show you how to work their happiness. This is the manage tab, and you can see that he is completely unhappy. Zero out of zero. He has no beds, no tables, and no trophies. Now, down here in my inventory, I have the trophies needed and the table and beds to set up for these laborers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw three mercenary laborers in here, because I'm gonna do mercenary. Gonna hire another one. We'll just place them all up here in the corner looking not organized at all. We're just gonna throw them up there just to show you. We will hire one more. All right, and you can kind of just follow along. Maybe you have this video up when you're playing your game. Uh, whatever laborers you want, it's gonna depend. There's different trophies that you're gonna need for each labor. Specifically, if you go to the market, you can filter for the different types of trophies. And for this one, we're going to have three mercenaries. So you check again, we check their happiness. It's zero out of zero. Now, the point of these laborers is they have these journals, right? We have a novice mercenary journal. We have generalist journal and a trophy journal. Now, both these are trophy journals. Now, we can't put these guys to work just because they're, you know, they're still setting up. But in the work tab, there's going to be a little like box spot that'll show you where to put the book when you have it. So for example, if I buy a novice mercenary journal and it says empty, right? We have the mercenary journal acquired from a laborer can be filled by killing NPCs of its tier or higher. So if we care, if we kill any tier two mobs or higher and then return it to the laborer to start them on a job. So what you do is you carry these books. Once you go out into the world and do what activity it's requesting of you, for example, if you like cutting trees, if you cut trees that tier of the book or above, you'll fill up the book with fame. You have to use fame to fill up these books. You could also do a generalist trophy journal, which will fill up from any type of fame, but specifically Specifically, you'll want to do the ones that are specific to your labor as well as the activity you're doing. I run lots of dungeons, corrupt dungeons, group dungeons, open world farming. So I mostly use mercenaries for my island. You're going to want to buy these journals, fill them up, and you're going to want to give them back to them. Now here's the next part. We have the happiness tab. So the happiness is controlled by the beds, tables, and the types of trophies they have, depending on once they rank up, they'll want higher tier beds, tables, and trophies. What we have starting and what you can use starting with your low level laborers is you get three beds, three journeyman beds, one journeyman table, and you get one tier two mercenary trophy, a tier three and a tier four mercenary trophy. And then you get a tier two adventures handbook, a magical tomb and an ancient scripture, which these are like the book trophies. They're the general trophies. They apply to everyone. You're going to want to always keep these the same, no matter what labor you're doing. The only difference is 
the mercenary trophies. If you're going to be doing lumber, like a lumberjack, you're going to want the lumberjack trophies. If you're doing a stone cutter, you're going to want the stone cutter trophies. It'll show you in the market how you can filter the tabs to look for the different trophies. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to place these furniture pieces down. The table's down. Now we check their happiness again. 100 out of 100. They are happy with the table that I've placed. They're still unhappy with everything else. So I'm just going to sort these up just so they're up here now. Uh, I have potatoes. Okay, so we're going to place the beds. So here's one bed. And we'll check their happiness with the one bed. So 50 out of 100. So we'll keep placing beds. One hundred out of a hundred. Okay, so th they'll be good. And when they level up, their happiness is going to go back down a little bit because generally you're just going to want one bed per labor, and you're going to want to keep tearing it up with them. Now that their happiness is a hundred out of a hundred, two hundred out of three hundred, we have to do the trophies now. So now we do the general trophies. We'll just place them right here. All right, we placed one. So we got five out of a hundred now. All right, place a tier three. And we place a tier four. And the reason that we're placing a tomb of different tiers, so now he's at 15 out of 100, so five each, is because you can't place double. It won't let you put down the same type. So you can't just go out and buy a bunch of tier four trophies and place them down in here. You could, however, since it's a tier five house, you could put down tier five trophies. Yeah, we're just, we're just doing this for the sake of the video. So I'm going to place two, three, and four for our mercenary trophies now. And the mercenary trophies only affect the mercenaries. See, that gave us another 10 each. So 35 out of 100. All right. So 45 out of 100, 245 out of 300. That's as high as we're going to be able to get them for the time being, just because we can't place any more trophies down at the moment. That is how you set up the laborers. Once you fill up the books... You send them out to work in this area right here i know they're still settling but you'll grab your full book this one's empty it'll show a different symbol when it's full it'll look like a stuffed book with like bookmarks sticking out of it and stuff you'll drag it over it'll tell you what their potential return is you send them out and they come back in 22 hours so it's kind of like a daily thing that's how you can get your first house set up and i did that for every single one of my houses as many house plots as you have, you're going to want to throw down as many houses as possible and do what I just did for every single house. All right, moving up. The middle house that we have, we use for storage. That's why we have a bunch of chests in it. Uh, each of these act like essentially like a bank. So you can store whatever you want in here. Like I got extra tombs. Here's a full mercenary journal, like with the bookmarks and stuff hanging out of it. Stuff like that. Different levels of journals. As they level up, they'll need different levels of journals just to get a better return. And here is one of my other houses that is, they're still, well, they're actually here. So you can see here that he just went out to work and he brought 2000 silver back for me. So I can take that from him and then I can give him a full journal right here. I can drop the journal for him. That is houses and labors. Next thing we're going to cover is farms. You're going to press H or your construction button again. You're going to go to the farming tab. There's multiple things we can do. We could do farm, an herb garden, a pasture, or a kennel. The easiest one that I recommend you do starting is farm. It'll show you what different types you can get. Whatever construction materials that I might not even have on me. And we're going to place this here. Alright. Let me grab the construction materials real quick. Alright, we got the materials that we need. And this is what we are going to throw into this construction site. So we throw these in, we fill it up. Now the farm is created. Now to start out, you can either purchase seeds from the market in town, or you can purchase some starter seeds from the merchant right here. The seeds on the market in town usually are cheaper, but you can purchase carrots to get started here. In this video, I am going to do potatoes just because um, on the destiny board, if you follow this line down right here to trainee farmer, and you follow that yellow line down again. It'll show you your harvester tab. And then you go down even further. We're working on crop farmer. So right now we have 62 out of 100. 
So we really have corn unlocked, but we've been doing potatoes. So as you get these leveled up, and specifically what you're working on levels up, uh, it'll take less focus to water the plants. And I'll show you that right now. So press place on whatever seed that you have. All right, it'll give you this little, if you hold shift, and I don't know if you have this option on mobile, so you might just have to click each one, but you just click and you hold shift while doing it. And it'll let you automatically plant on each spot. Now, I have only 1,400 focus right now. You, premium bonus gives you 100% crop yield, and watering bonus gives you a 27% seed yield. It, it, it's different for every, for every plant. So we're just going to water this. So we can either press water here, or we can hold shift and left-click the patch. So I'm able to water two at the moment. And now it shows a project, projected seed yield of 113% as opposed to 87%. So it gives it a bonus for watering. Uh, it cost me around 500 and I forgot what the number was that we just saw, but uh, it started out at like 800 and it's been going down as I've been doing potatoes more and more often. Now me personally, I have four patches and if you upgrade your island all the way, you can get five patches. So if you look at this chart right here, this is what you would see if you were at the island merchant, but you'd see these prices. So it's here one island when you first get it is, you know, 18,750 silver. You get one plot, you get no farming plots. Second tier, you get one farming plot and you get one after every single upgrade. And to upgrade your island all the way, let me just find my information real quick. It's going to cost 6,450,000 silver. It's worth getting your island upgrade all the way. I still have to do my last one. This account is very fresh. It's a new one that I'm working on. Haven't gotten the island fully upgraded yet. This is what you're going to want to do, though. You get all the building plots that you need to build all the houses and full five farming plots. Now that we have that done, these, again, these take 22 hours to grow. So you can do these alongside your laborers. Wake up in the morning or do them in the afternoon. You go in, you harvest all of your plants the same way that you would do is planting them. You just click on them and it picks them up and you would go to all your laborers, collect the books and whatever rewards that they give you. Then you reset the process. You fill the books, give them to your laborers, you plant all the crops and you wait another 22 hours. Now, I only have four plots, but here is an example of what I got from my last four plots of farm. So I got these potatoes and these extra four seeds. I have 27 seeds left in my inventory, but that's the plant. This is all that I got from this. So I got 184K total. And then my mercenaries bring out, bring back about two grand a piece. So that's 6K a house, you know, 6K a house. When you do, when you do 6K times seven. So we do six times seven. We get about another 42K. Um, once you get them to a higher level and plus you have that other seed plot, you'll be making upwards to above 250K plus depending on what you're planting and what level your laborers are. If you have a full tier island, you can get passive income of up to 300K. And that's just from giving them the books and planting the seeds. And those books that you have to fill up in with fame, if you don't want to do that, you can go buy them off the market. Some people will fill them up and sell them on the market and can get you, you can get your books done that way. But that is everything that you're going to need to know to get your island all started and going. Just plants and laborers. 22 hours a piece, you come back, you check on it. Once you get it all set up, you can go back out for the other 22 hours and just do whatever you want. Inside Albion, outside Albion, it doesn't matter. That 22 hours has to run its course, come back, rinse and repeat. And you do that every single day and it'll rack up over time. And that is the way that you make passive income in Albion Online. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure to leave a like, maybe even comment on the video. Let me know what you liked, what I can improve on, and also hit that subscribe button. But other than that, you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in Albion Online.